Now back home, the Democratic Alliance has handed in 87,000 public submissions to Parliament on the National Health Insurance Bill. The party says since the bill's introduction this year, it's been exercising its oversight role. The DA believes that the establishment of an NHI fund will essentially create another state-owned enterprise, which are generally poorly managed and fought with corruption, they say. So if you were, Kwahube is uh, the DA's health shadow minister. She joins us now from our studios at Pretoria. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening and thank you for having me. Right. So bar uh, the legalities or what you think is constitutionally challenging, what has been the main substance of your submissions? Look, I mean, the, the, the substance of our admission, I think, is, is, is twofold. We have identified about 25 clauses which we believe, or sections of the bill, which we believe are deeply problematic. Mm. Um, and so we've grouped these under, you know, four sort of themes, which is one, the fact that there are poor governance structures, which you alluded to around the establishment of the SOE. Our view is that if you're going to put together a fund of over 600 billion rand, then you've got to build in checks and balances to make sure that you don't have those who are politically appointed managing that fund. And then we've also raised the issue around an additional tax burden for South Africans because we are of the belief that South Africans are already stretched. And we've raised the underst the, also the other issue around some vague elements of the bill. For instance, South Africans are still not sure what package of care will be covered under the NHI. And so really there's still a lot of um, and no uh, clarity for people and they've been expected to comment on a bill that has not necessarily um, given that kind of clarity. And also the funding model. We know for a fact that the health minister and the finance minister are not on the same page about whether or not the NHI is affordable. But our big, big um, underscoring reasoning here is that we're of the belief that the health system in South Africa needs to reform, it needs to change, and that it is as let down millions of South Africans. But in order to do that, the NHI is not the vehicle to get there. In order for us to achieve universal health care, we need a holistical approach that will improve the health system as a whole because we believe that just a flawed funding model is not going to improve people's experiences or improve health care in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's what this bill seeks to do. All right, so let's talk about those governance structures. And as you mentioned, so the Department of Health is saying that uh, the NHI fund will be in respect of Section 3A as a public entity, and it provided its functions, including a board of the fund and powers of the fund who will govern that. Some will absolutely agree that SOEs are in total disarray, but others would argue that it's not necessarily the structures that themselves that are problematic, but it's the implementation of the corporate governance rules. Mm. Look, I mean, like I said, I mean, any good governance principles would dictate that you need to have checks, requisite checks and balances in managing a public entity or a public fund or a state-owned enterprise. And our big problem here is that, one, this board is appointed by the minister solely. Um, and he appoints an 11-person board. And also, the, ultimately, he has, he has the ability to appoint politically connected people. And we have seen that one of the things that has completely gone wrong with SOEs is the fact that there has been no um, accountability for political office bearers. And also, we haven't done enough to keep political office bearers away from public money. And ultimately, that, in, in our view, is just a poor governance model. And that if you're going to have a public entity, which we're, we're not of the view that you actually should in order to achieve universal health care, but if you were to have a public entity, then at the very least, you need to ensure that the appointment of the board is very separate from the political office bearer. Then the other issue is the fact that even the investigative unit um, that would be looking at issues of corruption or misappropriation of funds is located within um, the board and within the, 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 you know, the access of the minister. So really, there, there isn't a space where there's independence where we can be sure that this is 600 billion rand. We cannot take the chance that you know this could end up being another SAA or another SABC. Mm. We, we, you know, this is life or death. If we get it wrong, you know, people's lives are at stake.
Okay, so there's also going to be the introduction of the Board of, um, or rather the Office of Health Products uh, uh, Procurement that is going to address not only the centralization but the facilitation and coordination of procurement. Are you saying that there is a space to get the right people in there? I mean, you always emphasize meritocracy as uh, a political party. Are you saying that there are some corporate individuals who can coming from the public sector and do right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it will be completely um, uh, unfair for us to insinuate that one of the reasons why this is bound to fail is simply because it will, it's, it's, it's over-reliant on the public sector. They are brilliant um, uh, professionals within the public sector, but you need to set up, and anyone who is a public health specialist will tell you that one of the biggest problems with our health system in the country is that over 25 years, we've never done a system overhaul. And as a result, we've done a piecemeal approach for the past, you know, two and a half decades. And one of the, and, and it, is, it is almost, you know, mistaken to think that simply introducing a centralized fund is simply going to solve all our problems. And our worry is that people on the ground, and I mean, we have seen um, through these public hearings that people on the ground are saying, look, we'll support this bill, but does that mean that my I'm going to have a clinic that's functioning with um, nurses and doctors? And the reality is, you know, that's not going to happen. And so really what we want to do, we want to ensure that the, whatever bill that we, or whatever legislation is passed that will address the issue of universal health care, which we are in full support of, will actually improve the lives of people because South Africans can no longer wait. Mm. And so I think we do possess the skills in the public sector to do this, but we are asking the wrong question. The question is not whether or not we should centralize a fund. The question is how do we reform the entire system? Mm. Uh, so your alternative model, your alternative plan, how does it factor in that or, um, that complete overhaul of the health system in a manner that is also not destructive to the current mm. system, but also uh, works towards improving the foundation that's already there. Absolutely. So one of the things that, you know, you, when we look at universal health care, universal health care is almost premised on two sort of uh, pillars. One, you're looking at how do you fund the, that, that healthcare system. And then the second one is, you know, how do you provide equitable access that is of quality. And so with our alternative plan, we've addressed that second part. And our biggest criticism with the NHI is that it only talks about a funding model. And we've addressed the second part. And, the, and we are saying that before you can implement universal health care that people can truly trust, because right, we've, you know, South Africans have access to, to health care and, and health facilities, but very few South Africans truly trust them that they actually are of quality. So in order for you to really restore the trust that the public has with our public health system, you've got to improve it. You've got to invest in it. You've got to invest in infrastructure. You've got to invest in the emergency health care services. You've got to, in fact, fill critical posts which are still vacant. So one of the things that we've done in our alternative plan is that we have set aside to say, look, here's money that would be set aside to invest in the system that we have as a whole. And then in the funding model would look at how do we equitably give every single South African access to some kind of subsidy that would allow them to access whatever health care that they want, be it private or public. And we believe also that this bridges the gap between those who have and those who have not. So whether or not you are somebody who's unemployed and who wouldn't necessarily have medical aid, you would have a state-sponsored subsidy and you could go to whoever or whatever healthcare provider you, you want or you choose. And so really, as you say, you know, we wouldn't necessarily be throwing the entire uh, the baby with the cot the, okay. here, but what we would be saying is we would invest in what we have. Okay, so you spoke about innovation, especially with regards to public and private partnerships. But I'm wondering what kind of innovation, especially if you talk about a system like this, where there is natural distrust between uh, the two sectors, they're competing sectors, because it is a battle between the haves and haves not. Yeah. 
Look, I mean, I think, I think again, we've, we've looked at the relationship between public and private healthcare sector um, incorrectly. I think there is great opportunity for collaboration there. And one of the things that we've really tried to do in the Western Cape is to try and foster that relationship. And obviously with the limited scope, because, you know, it is a provincial government. But we've really managed to try and find some really um, great partnerships that would improve the lives of people. For instance, we've got working relationships with companies like Discam and Clicks that would be able to roll out um, contraceptives and roll out immunizations. So really, the, my view is simply this, that you know, we, the, the, two, the two industries need to have a symbiotic relationship. Okay. I think that if, if, if we can make sure that they do, the public is, is going to gain, ultimately. All right, thank you so much for your time. DA Health Shadow Minister Sevier Kwakhobe.